Why the Failure is sponsored by Verisurf, inspection and measurement software. Stick around after the episode to learn more. I'm Pete Zielinski with additivemanufacturing.media, and this is our video series where we ask why the failure. Uh, we're launching a new series of videos to look at build failure in metal additive manufacturing. This episode, specifically laser powder bed fusion. Failure is often a part of the learning curve in metal additive, but it happens more often than it needs to, and maybe we can do something about that. So I say we, let me bring in my expert guest and my co-host, Tim Simpson is a professor who focuses on additive manufacturing at Penn State University. Hello, Tim. Hey, good morning, Pete. All right, so um, Tim, laser powder bed fusion. Um, talk about the role of trial and error in getting to a repeatable production process in, in metal additive. Yeah, unfortunately, um, too many of us have to suffer through that trial and error to figure things out. Um, I'd say even though the technology has been around for uh, 30 plus years and, and metals well over a decade now, we're still uh, learning a lot about the physics of, of what's going on in the machine as it's running. Uh, certainly we're seeing uh, build simulation, process simulation, new software tools to help with all of this. But a lot of times, particularly in an R&D lab uh, like ours, you spend a lot of time sort of pushing pushing the envelope uh, and learning what additive can and unfortunately can't do. So uh, that trial and error part uh, is sort of a necessary evil now that we'll hopefully be able to avoid more in the future. All right, so here is the fail that we're gonna look at. So kind of a, a dog leg shaped part and it's got this like bubbly divot on, on one side that's not supposed to be here and this sort of lack of cohesion and solidness on the other side. It looks like algae growth on this part. What was this supposed to be and what material is this? Yeah, well, that was supposed to be flat. Uh, this is actually uh, 316L. Uh, we had run a uh, project uh, previously and had some leftover powder uh, and we were starting to collaborate uh, on another project with uh, Jonathan Kramer uh, an artist, a uh, Penn State alum, who did the We Are sculpture. So that part uh, is actually the base uh, of the uh, sort of small scale replicas of the sculpture. Why the failure? We're going we're gonna to talk about that. And the way that we're going to start to talk about that is by looking to um, some guesses that we've got to about, about what happened here. Uh, look for the AMWTF hashtag in LinkedIn. Um, we're always going to, as we do these videos, we're always going to debut our failures there and sort of ask for guesses from the, from the social media community that we reach. So, so this comes from Vishal Katak, and I, and I might have mispronounced that name. So here's how he started to analyze the problem. He's a material science graduate and, and it looks like he's started a job with Shining 3D in Germany. So congratulations, Vishal, good luck. Um, so here's what he says. Okay, let's go about it. As the build orientation is not specified, the mystery becomes bigger and I have to predict the history of the part. Um, if I go step by step, seemingly the shining side of the specimen was the up skin, which makes the distorted side the down skin. So the failure we see here is, is most likely due to imbalanced energy dissipation and the slight smudge was also caused by the recoder, seemingly. Uh, two failures are visible, lots of dross on the down skin center and a, and a slight warp portion in the center part at the up skin. Um, both are a result of improper energy dissipation due to a non-optimized strategy for the distorted side. So Tim, does that sound right so far? Yeah, I mean, I love, I love this response. So not only did we, you know, we put it out there and said what happened, but we also phrased it around, you know, what, what are the other questions you need to ask, right? So we didn't share the build orientation. We didn't say up, down. We didn't say, you know, here's the, you know, here's the origin of the build plate. So I love this response thinking about, all right, as I step through this, sort of conveyed his thinking on, on how would he try and tackle, uh, it's almost like a, a crime scene investigator, right? Where do right. you start looking for the, the failures? 
Right, okay, okay. So in that vein, let, let me add to this. So here's how uh, Sabrina Marquez with, with the Seam Research Center in Ireland thought about what she was seeing. My suggestion is, this defect depends on many factors that have not been specified. One of them is whether the part had supports or not. But due to the darkened regions at the bottom, I believe that the part was manufactured directly on the plate and cut by EDM, so it would not make sense to put supports. Since the part is manufactured directly on the plate, one possibility would be some stain or dirt on the plate. Another possibility is that the region of the failure is where the laser begins or ends the melting of the part contour on edge, and this causes it to concentrate a lot of energy in a single point. Failure in the recoder, I do not believe it is, because the mark in the region of the beginning of the S makes me believe that the, the deposition of the powder occurred from the bottom up. So a couple things here, Tim. Um, so Sabrina, in the way she analyzes this, she goes about eliminating some possibilities systematically, but then she notes one possibility that remains is some kind of imperfection or aspect of the build plate. Um, so I guess, Tim, pick that up and maybe follow that line of thinking, like what can we eliminate and then what factors are left and maybe what responses did you see in social media that were kind of promising? No, I, lo I love this uh, sort of line of inquiry well, and this is very similar to how we sort of go about diagnosing the problem, right? Sort of a root cause analysis. Okay, could it be this? Yes, no. Could it be this? No. Could it be this? No. And I, and I loved here not only was she posing those, but also answering them, and uh, to her credit, uh, correctly. So very good, Sabrina. And so if you look at, oh, was there a divot in the build plate uh, uh, or some sort of defect? You know, this is where your SOP uh, standard operating procedures for setup and build prep are critical to eliminating these, right? So is the, you know, is the build plate level? Is everything calibrated? Have you wiped it down uh, appropriately? Have you inspected for uh, defects in, in the plate, particularly if you are, you know, resurfacing and reusing the build plate, uh, making sure it's nice and smooth? Uh, so how are you do, doing that over and over and over again? So as of now, you know, it's not the geometry, right? It's all flat, uh, anchored to the build plate, uh, you know, assuming good SOPs, which uh, I've confirmed with the operator, you know, wiping everything down and making sure we're good to go before, uh, before we hit start. Uh, some of the factors that are left, what, what did you see? What, did, um, what other guesses that we got that maybe sort of positively pointed to some of the, the, the causes that might still be possible? Yeah, I think um, along those same lines, I love uh, Greg Paulson's response from Zometry, uh, talking about uh, you know, the adhesion or lack thereof uh, in a specific area, uh, the greasy thumb uh, uh, option, if you will. So the operator putting it in, uh, and not wiping it down, and now you've got an imprint or something that's uh, not a defect per se, but that would you know, cause lack of fusion. Uh, I certainly think um, could be an option, although once I revealed the orientation, uh, the thumb would have had to been sort of kitty corner to how the plate goes in, and of course, uh, you know, wiping it down afterwards sort of eliminates that. Uh, I loved um, Olaf Deagle as well uh, over in, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, looks like bad adhesion. Again, he was, uh, you know, correct in that regard. Uh, he thought maybe, you know, short feed uh, could have been one of the things, uh, a dirty plate, uh, as was said there, uh, or perhaps even too smooth. Uh, he mentioned that they sandblast theirs to rough it up just a bit. Uh, although, you know, that kind of creates some surface roughness, which good or bad. So I loved how, you know, an Olaf, uh, his response there, not only was it, hey, here could have been the problem, but here's sort of, you know, potential solutions and, and eventually saying, um, you know, we typically watch uh, the first 10 or 20 uh, layers of our prints to make sure that everything is going well. And, and uh, we do that as well. But this is where now, you know, inspection technologies, uh, sensing technology. So if you were taking a picture, for instance, every layer, you could look for powder spreading issues. You could look at post melting of the build to see if anything is starting to, uh, to warp up uh, or cause defects there. So Tim, do you even know why this failed? Like, let's come to that moment. Tim Simpson, why the failure? Ah, 
Yeah, I think um, I think a lot of people got close. So something else we did not reveal here. Uh, I mentioned earlier on this 316 uh, powder. So this was being reused and recycled. So, uh, you know, the most likely scenario uh, was that there was some uh, uh, clumping of powder. But again, looking at the orientation and the specificity of it, you can notice, you know, it's not a powder spreading, right? This is going right to left. Uh, we're tilting parts just a little bit. So you're trying to, you know, minimize direct impact of the collision. Uh, of the recoder uh, blade on the um, on the part. It also uses a soft recoder, a wiper, for instance, that um, as it goes across there gives you a little bit of a little bit of leeway in any distortion. But you'll notice, I didn't really see anybody pick up on this, but you'll notice how this thing uh, sort of elevates above the part, right? As it's distorting up, as it's uh, is not fusing, it starts to creep up. And so that only happens. Uh, and can only happen because of uh, uh, using a soft recoder or perhaps a, a carbon fiber brush or something as the options may be there. And so there's a, you know, with a hard recoder, we would have hit or smacked that very early and had to stop. But with a soft recoder, that can build up a little bit uh, and then uh, lead to eventually uh, potential failures there uh, later on in the process. But luckily we did come back uh, and as Olaf had suggested, we do come back about an hour later, uh, check and make sure everything's going okay. That's when we noticed it was not. Do you know why this part failed? I think the answer might be no in this case. Specifically, no. We know sort of the, the cause there, laser powder interaction, but whether it was one or the other or the combination of both, uh, to this day, we still haven't figured that out. And on some level, that's, that's disappointing, but on another level, like that's why we pick this as the first case we look at. There are a lot of variables that could individually or in some lead to an outcome like this. And, um, and some of the analysis that our, our, our audience did and some of uh, what you've spoken through here is the sort of, uh, uh, cause elimination that, that is necessary as part of getting to a successful, repeatable process for a part like this. I think you're spot on here, Pete. And I think, again, it points to the, the need for uh, and the benefits of combining, you know, process simulation, layer-wise monitoring, laser power, sort of in situ capabilities that all told will help you really gain that insight you need on which knobs and dials do you fine tune to, you know, maximize the productivity of your process and, and minimize these build failures, you know? All right, we're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna keep doing episodes of why the failure and the next fail we bring out, we will know exactly what happened. So Tim, you'll join me again soon? Absolutely. All right, so watch the hashtag. AMWTF in LinkedIn. We will debut the next failure there and watch for your guesses as we try to figure out why the failure. Thank you to our sponsor, Verisurf, a measurement solutions company. Use Verisurf software as a common measurement platform across the enterprise for analysis of parts made through additive manufacturing and other operations. Capabilities include quality and inspection reporting, advanced surface analysis, and reverse engineering. Built on powerful CAD CAM, Verisurf employs digital model-based definition, open standards, universal compatibility with CMMs, and comparison of measurement data to nominal 3D CAD or STL files. Regardless of operation, 3D printing, machining, casting or molding, Verisurf supports the process by verifying the part. Maintain the digital thread through design, engineering, manufacturing, and part validation. Learn more, verisurf.com.